Hello, and welcome to this episode of Cosmic Crow Tarot. As you can see from the cards lying here, today's video is all about the Emperor. Of course, I named the video a look at the Emperor cards, so you probably knew that before you even clicked on this, but here we are nonetheless. We've got the, the cards we all know and, and love, the ones that everything is based on. The Rider Waite Smith Tarot with the Emperor. This is the Radiant Wise Spirit Tarot. The Thoth Tarot, or Toth Tarot, depending on how you want to pronounce it, by Alistair Crowley and Lady Fita Harris. And then we have three different examples of the Emperor from different decks. From the Tarot in Wonderland. The Shadow of Oz Tarot. And the Dark Mansion Tarot. At the making of this video, I think we have about three days left of Aries season, so I, I had to get this video out now, or I would really wait till next year to do it, because Aries season relates to the Emperor. Because as we know, every sign of the Zodiac has a major arcana card, a minor arcana card, and a court card relating to it, and Aries is the Emperor. And we can see from here, it's the card of like the strong foundation, the ruler, the leader, the card of action, masculine energy, and all that. And if I'm being really honest with you, it's probably one of my least favorite cards in the deck because I don't like that authoritarian vibe. I don't particularly like like ruling and leaderships and just structure, strong foundations and stuff, authority, that kind of thing. It's just not something I really vibe that well with. And that's probably why the Emperor puts me off so much. But it's still an important card, and when it comes up in a reading, it shows the strong foundation that we've created for ourselves. So this card shows that we're really leading in our lives, so it's definitely a positive card. It's just, I don't know, it's not one of my favorites. But we're going to take a look at today anyways, and see what the different guidebooks that come with these decks. All but Dark Mansion, because Dark Mansion doesn't actually have a guidebook. But we're going to check out what the different guidebooks and the authors and illustrators of these decks were thinking when they created it. Let's start with the one we're all really familiar with first. The Emperor from the Rider Waite Smith Tarot. And here's what the little guidebook that comes with this deck, the Radiant Wise Spirit Tarot, says about the Emperor. The Empress, Empress reflected sensuality and the creative principle, while the Emperor balances Empress energy with rules and foundation. He gives form and shape to the Empress's expansive nature. The Emperor holds an Ankh, the Egyptian symbol of immortality. The globe in his left hand reflects his dominion over the material world. The astrological symbol of Aries is represented by the ram placed on his throne. He surveys his domain. The Emperor is where your habits and patterns are formed. Father, order, authoritarian, firm, masculine nature strong and assertive, setting limits and rules, type A personality, formation and stability. The red armor that the Emperor wears in this illustration always makes me think of Bram Stoker's Dracula. I mean, you know, when it comes to Dracula, if anybody had that, that ruling leadership quality, uh, he was alive for hundreds of years. So he definitely gave off that vibe, and if someone actually made, like, a deck with those kind of characters on them, I'd probably buy it. Moving on to the Toth Tarot, Thoth Tarot, however you want to pronounce it. We'll take a look at what the little white guidebook comes, that comes with that deck says about it. This card means government, by means of two contrasting symbols. These are the ram, which was wild, and which, when wild, is solitary and courageous, and the lamb, which is docile and call it cowardly, and is, in fact, the ram tamed by authority. The posture typifies the alchemy of sulfur, the fiery element of the universe. The red eagle represents the red tincture of the alchemists, which is of the nature of gold. I don't know what it is about this little book, but when I read what's in the book, I start getting tongue-tied, and it's like I sound like a total dork, but that's just a little clip of what Aleister Crowley was thinking, and later Frida, Frida Harris was thinking when they created this deck. And I don't think anything actually mentioned in it, in that little clip, that he's got a bomb in his hand as well, and he's holding his little, little ram 
statue or his or his scepter I guess showing like he has the power like he has the leadership if he wants to use that bomb he has the power to use the bomb and then he's got that Aries scepter right here and the Aries symbols right here that show his natural leadership qualities moving on we'll take a look at the Emperor from the Tarot in Wonderland this guidebook is definitely one of the most descriptive guidebooks that I possibly have and here it is it's very thick I will read you what it says about this particular Emperor now through the looking glass after the terror of swimming around in the pool of tears that Alice cried when she was very large she's much smaller now and a collection of creatures make their way to the shore they are all soaked through and very miserable after a failed attempt to generate dryness by a mouse who attempted the feat by sharing a very bit a very dry bit of history the dodo takes over the situation like a true leader first he organized a caucus race marking out a vague shape for a track and placing the participant participants randomly on it there was no official beginning rather the creatures all ran whenever they liked and stopped whenever they wanted after a half hour the dodo group proclaimed the race is over although it took him some time to determine who won they had all won and all required prizes it took no time to determine who should provide the prizes alice of course luckily she had a tin of lozenges in her pocket which were handed round as prizes in the text alice hands them out but here as the emperor the dodo is managing the resources like any good leader he identified the problem assessed the resources available and managed them in a way that benefited them all well mostly all having virtually no resources the dodo rightly surmised that running around in the sun would help dry them quicker a race was a diverting way to do it but since everyone was already out of temper the rules were loose and no one was named as a loser since alice was the only creature with pockets only she could possibly have anything that could be used as prizes while perhaps not ideal the dodo did do the best he could in creating an environment where the citizens of his little flock could achieve their goals get dry and not feel bad the setting for this image is a formal garden to represent civilization and culture the emperor's realm of command order efficiency and the achievement of goals as well as the wise use of resources are the emperor's guiding values down the rabbit hole in a reading the Re emperor reminds us that we are the stewards of our own lives as well as the active participants in our own societies the empress teaches us that there is a season for everything the emperor heeds her teaching and knows that food will not be readily available all the time and therefore creates structure to ensure that his people can survive the winter likewise we must pay attention to our resources and think of future needs to plan accordingly even when we are planning our own lives when we act as emperors for ourselves our actions affect others as well as the world around us a true emperor has a long broad vision in shamanic understanding whether an individual does or doesn't agree with their culture everyone is encouraged to accept their responsibility in creating that culture it is easy to place blame on a single person or a group of people as emperors for the sad state of affairs society and moral responsibility for our society i'm sorry spiritual and moral responsibility for our society lies within each and every one of us we are all emperors and hopefully we will all try as hard as the dodo to do the best we can with what we have as i said earlier i'm just i'm not a fan of this card because just authority and telling us what to do and stuff like that it's just never sat well with me why does one person get to say like their beliefs and do this and then other people are shunned for their own but like that that guidebook just mentioned there's a need for it there's a need for the police there's a need for the government there's a need for structure and order or everything would just be chaotic and wild so while this isn't one of my favorite cards it's definitely a card that we need to see and talk about sometimes because that authority and that strong foundation it's needed to have the society and the comfortable lives that we're all used to next we'll we'll take a look 
at the Emperor from the Shadow of Oz tarot. Which, we've all seen The Wizard of Oz, we all know that story, and we can tell from this illustration that the Emperor is none other than the Ten Woodsmen. Who, in case, in, in case you didn't know, which I didn't know this until I read the, all the books that L. Frank Baum wrote, the Emperor, or the, the Ten Woodsman actually has a name. He used to be human. He was in love with a, a girl, a munchkin, and she worked for an evil witch, and the wicked witch enchanted his axe and chopped him up in little pieces. And then a, a tin, tin worker, he managed to put the pieces, like, make him into the creature we see today, or the character we know today. And his name originally was Nick Trapper. So that's just a little fun fact about the Wizard of Oz, if you didn't know. Ten Woodman, his real name is Nick Chopper. Now we'll take a look at what the guidebook shares about this deck. Now, I absolutely love this deck, but I, I feel the need to complain a little bit about the guidebook itself. I've only had this book for a couple months, since my birthday in December, and it's already falling apart. And I don't even use the guidebooks that much, mostly just for this. So it's just not put together that well. But all the pieces are still there, all the pages and stuff just kind of falls apart. Anyway, this is what the guidebook says about the Emperor. The Ten Woodwin, now the Emperor of the Winkies, is on his metal throne. He is nickel-plated and burnished bright. There is a scar where his heart was inserted. He holds his axe as a scepter, the wooden handle having been replaced with gold. The throne room is dominated by silver and gold. In readings, this means authority, structure, control, and upgrading. And this is what the shadow notes say. Mature, adult, in charge, the head of state. The tin woodsman's metal body has taken on a more military appearance, become more of a suit of armor. He has responsibility to defend and protect, to provide and to guide. He is the strength of the country, and his appearance suggests that he can bear the weight. A whole male persona might be of use to you now. Take responsibility for the entire tribe. And last, but certainly not least, we will take a look at the Emperor from the Dark Mansion Tarot. The Dark Dange Mansion Tarot doesn't actually come with a guidebook, but the illustrations are really easy to interpret and really get your intuition going. I love the illustrations in this deck. They're, they've got such a Tim Burton vibe, and they're, they're just really pretty. The Emperor is shown here. He's got like the red robe, kind of like the Rider Waite Smith deck. And behind him are two banners, one with a ram and the other one with some kind of bird. A phoenix, perhaps an eagle. I'm not really sure. Again, no guidebook, so no chance of really knowing. He kind of, this illustration kind of makes me think of the Hierophant. And in order to have that a Hierophant, you know, that spirituality and that just belief in something bigger, we we have to have that strong foundation and really feel comfortable in our lives and feel in control. And that's what the emperor is all about. Just having control, having authority and that strong foundation that we all rely on to keep our society going. Looking at all these different illustrations, I, he definitely has like that look of just authority and he's seen things and experienced things and he has this natural right to be a leader in his life and we've all got that too we've all learned things and experienced things and had different experiences in our lives that help us lead in specific different areas and seeing as airy season is the beginning of spring in the northern hemisphere at least uh, it's this is the time of year that we really start creating those strong foundations and start building the lives that we want and able to grow the plants and things that we need to keep us alive in the dead of winter when it's too cold for things to grow. It's all up to us individually to create those strong foundations for ourselves and the ones around us. So it's in order to create, like, to keep living these lives that we enjoy and we feel safe in, we have to have that strong foundation. And that strong foundation comes from within and building it for ourselves and paying attention to what we need and what we enjoy and what makes us feel comfortable and of course like being there for others as well like the emperor is an important card in the tarot it's probably one of the more important cards in the tarot because when it appears it just shows you're doing this right you've created this strong foundation for yourself or maybe it should when it appears it shows that you need to be working on controlling or 
yeah, controlling this strong foundation or creating this strong foundation. That was a small look, short look at the emperor in the tarot, different illustrations of it. I truly hope you enjoyed this video and I want to thank you very much for watching. I'll see you again soon.